What is up everybody? Welcome to another modern video. Today we're going to be bringing back an archetype that I created like a year or two ago. At this point I don't even know. Uh, but I haven't played in a minute and that is Naya Lands. This is an archetype that I built thinking about the interaction between Ren and Six and Ursa Saga. Obviously this is a very very strong combination and uh, not many decks are trying to take advantage of it. So I figured I wanted to make a deck that could uh, that could make good use of uh, this very underplayed interaction and uh, i'm also trying to play uh, my invitational card elvish reclaimer and it, it kind of was built from there up um, also titania was printed alongside saga i mean it wasn't printed it was just like made modern legal i guess and this is the card that i always really really liked in legacy and I, it was weird to me that nobody was hyped about it. And the truth of the matter is that there's just no good shell for the card. So what I wanted to do was try to build a deck that uh, could make good use of Titania as well. And, uh, you know, Surinorv and, and Ursa Saga finding Surinorv uh, really does a lot towards helping that be a thing. So... We have like a little bit of some synergy going on here. This is also a way that you can go over the top of most decks. Like if you manage to resolve a Titania with uh, with Surinorv in play, uh, then uh, I don't think there's very many decks in the format that can beat you gaining like 10 or 12 life or something and then making basically 50 power out of nowhere or something like that. Uh, it, can, it can get really out of hand when you combine it with fetch lands and whatnot, so... Uh, because of that, I think that that is a it's a pretty good uh, way to a pretty good start strategy to aim towards. We also have access to uh, Sogat Lantern, Shadow Spear, Expedition Map. These are our one-off uh, tutor targets that we can find off of uh, Ursa Saga. So um, yeah, that's kind of our, our little saga package. I don't want it to go a little bit too overboard with Ursa Saga. I think that it's very easy to try to. Oh, I just want to make my deck all about Ursa Saga. And the truth of the matter is that Saga is just fine as itself. Like, when you are rebuying it every turn, you don't need that many artifacts to get enough value from it. Um, because your constructs are eventually going to grow anyways, just naturally, by being many. <laughs> so, uh, besides that, we have some Gracers to sort of speed up our game plan. As I said earlier, Ren and Six uh, does everything in this deck. Like, not only do we have access to... Um, you know, multiple Ursa Sagas, multiple Flagstones. We also have some utility lands that we can go tutor off of Reclaimer and Expedition Map. That is Bajugabog, Blast Zone, Boseju, Who Endures. And uh, in this specific list, a brand new card from Suits of Nukapena in Jetmir's Garden. This is the Naya Triome. Uh, this does a lot towards making, uh, helps a lot towards making the mana of the deck super, super smooth. And uh, it's basically free. We can find this off of a Flagstone trigger, uh, which is, is very, very clean. So we also have access to a couple of copies of Endurance and a couple of copies of Renegade Rallier. In the past, I've tried cards like a Dryad of the Elysian Grove. And uh, what Dryad did is obviously it allowed you for a way to go over the top of most strategies. But on the other, on the other side, it was forcing your mana into playing multiple copies of Valakut, which was just straight up a terrible land to have access to in your deck. Like it, it, it actively hurt your win percentage every time you drew a Valakut and it just did nothing. Um, but um, yeah, so it was a little bit weird. So instead I tried Renegade Rallier, which can still sort of ramp uh, when you have access to any fetch land, which we're playing nine copies of. Really wishing that I could make room for uh, fetch land number 10, but I think that the other one of... Um, lands and like the mana base is a little bit too taxed but this is kind of what i'm looking for like uh, fetch land number 10 um but uh, rather also works really really well getting back your elvish reclaimer getting back uh, your artifacts if they happen to get destroyed by something like a force of vigor or whatever and the most powerful interaction obviously is that you can actually get back your rent and six uh, which is as you can probably imagine very very powerful to round out the deck, we have some Elder Amber Skull, so we can set up, uh, you know, some Titania turns, some Endurance, which we have access to copies in the main deck as well, uh, some Renegade Rallyers uh, as well, and some Reclaimers in, in 
to you know to two boot we, we can uh, actually get reclaimer in the mid to late game and it's a legit very good draw right because if it goes an answer then you can find your saga you can start ramping with flagstones you can still do some very very powerful things finally we have some removal spells in prismatic ending and march of otherworldly light um, first I'm trying out March in the deck. In the past I tried cards like Lightning Bolt, which were fine, uh, but I wanted to find a card that could answer other threats like Omnath or, uh, or whatnot. So uh, we'll see how this works because uh, March not going towards Planeswalkers can be a problem, but at the same time, you know, answering um, artifacts and enchantments can be pretty, uh, pretty powerful as well. So we'll see how the card feels. I honestly haven't tested it just yet. In the side world, we have access to forces and two more copies of Endurance. I think Endurance is fantastic in the metagame right now, so I'm pretty happy playing the full four copies in the 75. Also some Chalices, mostly against the uh, the decks like uh, with Cascade, but it's also serviceable against decks like Blue Red Murktide, where you can just side out your Elders Reclaimers, and then you bring in your Chalices, you can play Chalice on one, it can be very, very powerful. Same thing against Grixis Shadow. And Junior Explosives, fantastic against Rhinos, fantastic against Hammer, stuff like that. Torpor Orb is there mostly against uh, the four color uh, decks. I think that having access to, to Orb is a way that we can uh, stop all their value <laughs> train and actually keep up with what they're doing or go over the top of what they're doing. So uh, I'm going to be trying out a couple of copies of Tor Torpor Orb. Two extra copies of Oseju are my hate card against uh, Tron or Amulet. I was thinking about doing something like Dumping Sphere, but the problem with those with cards like that, Dumping Sphere, Alpine Moon, is that uh, your opponent will eventually find an answer and then you're going to be dead. So instead of going that route, I'm just gonna try to literally blow up all of their lands and see if that strategy works out. Obviously with Ren and Six, uh, that's, a, that's a very powerful combination. Finally, Peating Needle as another uh, Saga target uh, that we can have access to. Uh, on games two and three, and unlicensed hearse. This is definitely a test card right now. I've seen people having a lot of success using the card against Blue Red Merktide, so I'm going to be trying it out here as well. Other potential cyber cards that I, I was thinking about include uh, Rana Foul uh, or uh, something like even Celestia Charm can be pretty interesting. Uh, Celestia Charm, obviously, a, a way to kill Merktide and Death Shadow and big threats like that. Uh, through a chalice of, uh, of the void which we actually do want to have access to in the in that kind of matchup so that's a you know just we needed a two mana answer and that's the best i could come up with at least um yeah so this is the deck list we're gonna see how it fares through a modern league if you are enjoying the content make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and if you're interested in uh, you know supporting the stream uh, through patreon or through donations i can play any deck list of your choosing whenever you make a donation of 20 dollars or more and if you're interested in coaching as well you can find all the information you need in the description of the video down below let's see you in rank number one all righty turn one reclaimer don't mind if i do so we can go turn one Reclaimer, I guess turn two fetch line go, if the Reclaimer dies. Because I kind of want to save the foothills for Renegade Wrath. If the Reclaimer does not die, we can just, you know, get a fetch line with the Reclaimer. So that's also fine. Although I guess if the Reclaimer does die, I'm a little bit more interested in... Huh. Well, I guess we untapped now. So now what? Um, am I just playing Saga here? I think I'm just playing fetch. So let's play fetch, get, I guess, another big forest and say go. And I wanna fetch immediately so my opponent doesn't kill my reclaimer in response to the to my fetch. Okay, so this is probably Calibrated Blast. I don't know if there's any other deck that will do this in the first two turns of the game. Okay, so I'm gonna go for... Um, no, let's go for Saga, because this gets Surin Orb into play quickly. And I feel like I'm interested in getting Surin Orb into play, so that I can go off with Titania. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have the Calibrated Blast. No, that's Calibrated Blast. Well, this is fine. Balance my Reclaimer. You got me. So we can get the Garden here, which is nice. So that sort of just fixes our mana straight up. Um, and now what? Um, we could get a fetch land. Next turn, we're gonna have four, five, six mana, so we can go Rallyer, get back fetch, and activate Saga. 
or we can simply just cast Titania. But I think I want to cast. I want to wait to cast Titania until the turn where I can just uh, find Suranorv and then cast Titania. So we go a little bit over the top. So I think yeah, let's do that. So let's get Flagstones. Balance my dude. That's fine. It's not a great draw, but it's fine. So fetch for a mountain. Renegade Rallier. Get back. I guess I'm gonna get back a basic forest. Pass the turn. I'm just gonna make a saga token. And then next turn we can probably kill the defair. Unless they play a white source. If they play a white source, then they can instant speed verdict. So I'm not gonna play into that. Okay, so I'm gonna stop it now. What are they doing? Expressive iteration. So they seem to be playing some sort of value deck. And if they're playing a value deck we can probably outvalue them. Uh, we, we can't really outvalue the four color Yorion deck. That one has a little bit too much value, but if they're playing something like Niv, I think that Titania plus Suranorb goes over the top of whatever Niv is doing. Would it foothills? Unless opponent has a verdict. Five, six. Oh, that doesn't do it though. So I think my opponent's just playing Niv, right? That has to be it. So I can technically answer both Planeswalkers by Getting Shadow Spear. If I get Shadow, Sp I, I make a construct, get Shadow Spear, equip the Rallier. Rallier swings at Ren, construct swings at the Fairy. So I think we're going to do that. Shadow Spear, equip. I guess we can equip. Yeah, I, I'd rather my opponent kill the Rallier. So this attacks the Fairy, this attack Ren and Six. Now, I put again solid to one of my things, but I don't know, whatever. Um, so let's play a Reclaimer and do this. I'm over I'm overextending into a Verdict, uh, but also I can just Titania next turn. And again, my opponent doesn't have double white. I feel like coming up K shape here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to upkeep activate Reclaimer. Oh, Valakut. Oh, that's scary. Well, I definitely want to get Surinor going ASAP now, now that I know that my opponent is playing Scape Shift. So I'm definitely gonna try to. Oh, my opponent's gonna kill Reclaimer. Sad. Okay, never mind. No upkeep for me. Huh. So opponent can technically go Dryad into Land Land's Cape Shift, and I would lose. But then I can just march the Dryad. So let's attack first. Let's see if the Rallyer connects. And if the Rallyer connects, we're gonna be at 26. So now we can't naturally die from Cape Shift. So one, two, three. For five, I Titania. One, two, three, four, five. I actually don't think I want to Titania here. I think I'd rather just play Sag and say go. It plays around Verdict a lot better. Because I also get to Endurance on my opponent's sense that if I want to make sure that I have Lethal. Anger of the Gods or something. That would be good, I guess. <laughs> That's a bring to light for four. So my opponent is going to go get a sweeper and then I can endurance. I can endurance on the run step to keep the pressure. And if they BTL for this, that means that they don't BTL for escape shift, right? So that's also good for me. Yeah, there's the verdict. They have to play a land here. If they don't play a land here, I think that we're going to be, we're going to be Gucci. And I think I don't want to target anything with endurance. So I'm just going to cast Endurance and target nothing. Because I don't want to give my opponent more options for their Bring to Light. Now the question is, do I play Titania here? Because Titania represents, like, they're, they're out of Verdict. And Titania represents a bunch of 5-3s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 1, 2. So I can't... I definitely want to equip, because I want to be at the maximum life total possible. So, swing 4... One, two, three, four, five. I think I'm just gonna play my land and say go. The idea here being that I don't want to, I don't want my for my opponent to go dry into escape shift and then I lose. It's a dry. It kind of feels like my opponent's gonna run into this march of fuller worldly light, which would be good for me. The fairy time raveler. Well, no. <laughs> um. So, okay, exiling number zero. So I have to cast x equals four. All right. So Dryad's dead now. My opponent's going to bounce the Endurance. 
so they they don't just die. Just a little bit bad for me, but then I'm gonna I'm gonna find Suro Norwalk of the Saga, and that's gonna give me a bunch of bunch of life anyway. One, two, three, four. Maybe I shouldn't have made a token there. Here's Suranorb. I guess it's free. I'm not equipping this turn anyways. I already have Orb, so I'm just gonna get back Saga here for extra value. We at least get a three, a five three, right? We can gain a significant amount of life. I guess if my opponent has a Dryad into, um, I guess I could technically get a Flagstones here. Yeah, let's target Flagstones, hold priority and suck the other flagstones. This gives me one extra 5-3 and uh, one ex uh, two extra life. Get Temple Garden, stones back, here we go. I don't, I really doubt that they have another Supreme Verdict. And if they do, we have another Titania. They could have another Dryad, however. And if they have another Dryad into Scape Shift, we're dead. There's the Dryad. Maybe my opponent will play around Boseju. Suranor, gain some life. It's possible that I'm getting jubated. I can't really play around anything, right? So fetch land, get stomping ground, do that. Then again, a bunch of life, make a bunch of five threes. Lose to escape shift, but beat anything else. Because I don't think that they have a second verdict. And I, I don't think I can gain enough life to get above of scape shift, of scape shift rate um, damage, because they have a dried in play that I, ha I don't have an answer to. So I think that I'll just do this, which allows me to play Titania next turn if I need to. So I think we're just letting this go now. <clears throat> Important fetches, down to one. Get a basic forest, which is bad news for me probably. Kill the elemental. And now what, opponent? What are you gonna do? Iteration. Okay. Iteration means no skip shift, I think. Unless I miscount it and they I think that there are land drops. There we go. All right, sweet. Beating Scape Shift, Scape Shift game one is kind of sick, actually. So I like the Boseju's. Don't like Blast Zone. Don't like Bajuga Ball. Don't like Endurance. Uh, maybe one Force is fine. We don't really have that many tools for this matchup. Don't really have that many tools. Hmm. Maybe Needle. And maybe Bajuga Ball is better than Soul Guide Lantern. No, I guess Soul got at least cycles. Torpor doesn't do anything. Hers doesn't do anything. Explosives doesn't do anything. Prismatic Ending also kind of sucks, but I guess it does answer Planeswalkers. First, the Vigor answers Dryad if there's no Teferi in play. So it's certainly a consideration. But I think I'd rather just have Boseju. Yeah, let's go with this. All right, game number two. Um, turn one Reclaimer. Hmm. We can also go turn one Gracer. March is not super good. This hand really wants a Renin 6. I'm gonna keep though. Like turn one Reclaimer is is just so good. Maybe I should be Mullioning though, because I, I don't think I'm gonna have a good timing to play this Gracer out. Unless I top deck exactly a fetch line, in which case I'm gonna go turn one. Um, probably Boseju into Gracer, play fetch, turn two. No, I'm gonna go uh, heat into fetch. Never mind. So no need to think. <clears throat> so here goes reclaimer. Is this the John one? Yeah. Huh. This deck's mana base is feels a little bit all over the place now. Black red. Well, he <laughs> uh, <laughs> got me good, opponent. How am I ever gonna win without my gracer? You know. Uh, I can activate Reclaimer or I could just play this Ren in 6. I think playing Ren is just better. So let's get Sacred Foundry, Green Red. And I think I'm gonna value getting my land drop a little bit higher than killing the Valky. Opponent has got their own Ren. That's fine. We're not blocking here. And actually, if I block... Yeah, I'm actually I am blocking. Because I have, I, I'm gonna get back the Gracer, so I still have good ways of using my mana, and I'm hitting my land drops. If my opponent has a Bolt, then they get to kill my Ren, which is bad news. And now I can set up Titania for next turn. Purse it bigger. It doesn't really... Fetch land. I think we're just gonna get a basic Forest. Plus... 
Racer would fetch into play. Do I just want to needle this? I don't think so. I think I'd rather just fiddle that risk call and get a Titania. Play Misty, okay. So they're showing me that they have another land in hand, which is probably good for me. Misty to hand. Maybe I shouldn't have traded. Well, we can just kill this now. So March this. Exile March, I think. Done. So that means that they don't get the extra land drop. Oh, they already, they already got the extra. Oh, I, I thought that this was turn five for whatever. Because I, because <laughs> I was already, I, I already ramped myself. Whoops. Ah, that's probably fine. Whatever. I would really like to find Surinor because if we find Surinor, we can blow up our own Voseju and then get it back with Ren. We're gonna be a little bit behind with our um, with our um, mana right now. Slightly awkward. I could call for a Rallier, get back Elvish Reclaimer. That's actually not bad, I think. Get that back, play this, fetch for another forest, call for a Rallier, Rallier back Reclaimer. That's the turn. Could have also Rallier back the Peeding Needle, um, Rallier back the land so I can play Peeding Needle, but I'm, I'm ahead on Ren. So if my opponent doesn't have an answer, they're gonna need to they're gonna be forced to minus on my Ren. Opponent taps a bunch of mana. It's probably another bring to light. Bring to light for verdict, I assume. That's a bring to light for verdict. Okay. So it's my Ren versus my opponent's Ren. It's except if they have another BTL, we just lose. Not great for me. Back fetch, a reclaimer. We do have access to four, so if they try to do something silly that depends on Dryad, we can blow them out, which is nice. But it's not looking great. It's not looking great. This needle is also looking super awkward. Maybe I should have I should have just needled to fairy. Opponent pluses Ren on Misty Rainforest. So that's gonna be land number seven. So if they do have scape shift, we are dead. However, if they try to get cheeky with a dryad or something, we can blow them out. So I'm just gonna have six here posture a little bit that I have nothing and maybe bait my opponent into into this force. Uh, it looks like my opponent's not. Yeah, it's a big deal. I mean, they still have to show me that they have enough mountains, right? I guess that that's what the tanking was about. My opponent was just thinking. All right, this is why you don't concede. <laughs> this is why you don't concede. Because your opponent may just mess it up. Um, yeah, so they just... They just resolved uh, Scape Shift wrong. If they had gotten one Valak or enough mountains, the thing is, I don't know if my opponent has enough mountains in their deck, right? So we just play on, just play on. We have the force if my opponent does play a Dryad. And I'm trying to think if we're doing anything on my upkeep. So let's get Jet Mid's Garden here. Um, Cause I can upkeep, activate, reclaimer, the Sack Boseju. What that does is allows me to, I guess I can blow up two of my opponent's green sources. So that's probably fine, but I guess I don't have to do it on upkeep. I can just, can just wait. So if I do it, for, if I do an upkeep, I can get a saga and I can basically skip a chapter. So that, that actually seems quite relevant. So let's do it on upkeep, find our saga. And now Suranorb is actually a solid draw right there. So play Suranorb. I can ultimate this Ren. I can ult this Ren. Play second Ren. But March doesn't get rid of my opponent's Ren. So I think even though I can ultimate this Ren, I should probably minus to ping it. Also, this makes Reclaimer 3 4 at instant speed, which is nice. I can also just Boseju. Blow this up, but then my opponent gets the Ren back. So what I could do... No, I can only Boseju you once, actually. So that's not really a plan. I can only Boseju you once. I could just kneel. I could just plus some Boseju you and just play Beating Needle on Ren and Six. Now, I think I just passed the turn. The Fairy sucks. <laughs> the Fairy sucks for me. 
Okay, so now they're gonna be able to take an ultimate Ren. Does that even do anything though? I don't think that does anything. So the ultimate Ren, they cast Scape Shift again, but they don't have enough mountains now. So I think we'll let this resolve. I'm gonna play a Dryad. They literally know about the Boseju, so they can just play a, ry a Dryad. Sewer Nord. Why are you blowing up my Sewer Nord opponent? This is not cool. Oh, let's kill the Ursa Saga. And I kind of feel like I have to do something. I kind of feel like I have to Boseju something here. Uh, this is probably just fine, I guess. I think I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna die here though. That's a Dryad, all right. Do you have more mountains, opponent? They need more mountains here. Misty. Okay. So I think that this is proper sequencing because I'm assuming, I'm assuming my opponent doesn't have any more mountains. But at the same time, this could backfire. Because I'm going to be giving my opponent a mountain right now if they have access to another mountain. So... Okay, so they don't have another mountain. That's good. So now those Valka triggers Fissile. I don't know why they got the fetch land there. They should have just gotten a mountain. <laughs> they just get back a mountain with the Ren and then just... Wait, what? Oh, because it, it does... It was a mountain when it entered. Uh, okay. So I guess I did fuck that up. My bad, my bad. Okay, so now we're going to... Priority number one. We're going to get rid of this thing. So that's gone. Plus on... I guess I'm going to plus on Saga. Play this out, and I'm going to Needle Naming the Fairy Time Raveler. Now we're gonna say go. If opponent does have another Dryad, we can just force it. But yeah, it, it, my opponent, it, they didn't mess it up. They simply did not have any more mountains. They just did not have any more mountains, so that's what happened. We're getting back an island. Why? Why are you not getting back a mountain, opponent? You have, <laughs> you have two Valakids in play. What's going on right now? So now they can BTL for Omnath, I guess. Or they can just BTL for another Dryad. And if they BTL for a Dryad, I think I die probably, because I can't force this. They do BTL for it. Man, I should have died so many times this game. <laughs> I should have died so many times this game. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild the amount of times that I should have died. Opponent iterates. And now what? What are they gonna find off of this? I mean, I'm not in good shape, I'll tell you that much. Wooded Foothills, Gracer. Yeah, we're, we're just super dead. Oh, Gracer, play nothing. <laughs> it sounds strategy. <laughs> oh my. Um, well, I mean, this is kind of what we can do. So let's do what we can do there. Here go. Not the most impressive turn I've ever seen, but we gotta do what we gotta do. That's two Dryads down. My opponent finally realizes they could be getting back some mountains. Oh, they do have another Dryad. Okay, so now I'm I'm just dead. So now they could be getting fetch lands and finding basic forests and stuff. Maybe they don't have another one because they just used... Maybe they're just playing the four basics. I could see that. Oh, second Ren. So if they have any fetchable in their deck that can be found off of Misty or Wooded Foothills, I'm actually just dead right now. Looks like they don't have it. All right. Down to four I go. When it passes the turn, Prismatic Candy kills the Ren, and then we play. Okay, so let's get Soul Guide Lantern. Randomly relevant. <laughs> Random, re randomly relevant right now. Get rid of that. Now we can go Prismatic Candy the Dryad. Red, white, green. This means that any random fetch line off the top doesn't kill me. We're hanging. We're hanging on. We're hanging on. Crack Soul Guide Lantern responds to the rain activation. So now they don't have any more mountains. So Valakut should not do anything unless they do find another Dryad. It's a Saga. Saga is good. So play that. Play Ren and Six. Play a Reclaimer. I think I'm going to get back Boseju this turn since I already played the Saga. We're gonna hope to dodge here. And then if we do next turn, we can just Boseju blow up both Balakids. And now we don't have to worry about that anymore, at least. 
Oh no, because then then Ren gets them back. So that's not a good strategy, I guess. <laughs> There's the fetch land. So I guess this reclaimer is gonna be attacking Ren and Six. Man, what a wild, <laughs> what a wild turn. They have no more fetchables. <laughs> Oh, this game has been a delight. This game has been an absolute delight. What is going on? What the hell is going on? So we're gonna attack Ren here. <laughs> Ren takes it. Okay, so plus on, I guess, a forest. Play the forest. And I think I'm playing the expedition map. How? Do we find ourselves in this position right now? <laughs> How are we finding ourselves in this position right now? This is so wild. We got a Grazer. Valak at number three. That's a dead draw. Their last card in hand is a fetch land. Oh my god, are we really about to win this game? There's nowhere we're about to, <laughs> we're about to win this. This is kind of ridiculous. So we're just gonna equip Shadow Spear. And we're just gonna go ham here. Wow. I can't believe that we're actively ahead here. This attacks Ren, and I think this is going to attack the fairy. So my opponent can pretend they're Ren by throwing both Gracers into the trash, but I think that's fine. Because with this I go up to 10. Both Planeswalkers die past the turn. There's no way we're about to win this, right? Omnath, Tracker, all right, all right, that's a real card. That is most definitely a real card. Don't know if it's going to outrace these constructs though, because I'm gonna start spitting out two constructs a turn. And Reclaimer also gets in there. At least this turn Reclaimer gets in there, because I'm happy to trade. Opponent taps some mana, Prismatic ending the Shadow Spear. Okay, that definitely slows down the clock. But doesn't stop it. Wow, we won. <laughs> How did that happen? We'll never know. But I'll see you in the next match. Okay, this hand is interesting. It has three of our four Saga targets, so that's not great. But we do have a turn one Reclaimer. We also do have Gracer, which is pretty good against a monkey deck. And we also have Prismatic Ending. I think I'm going to ship it, though. Like, three... If, if you'd only had two of them, I would consider it. But, like, being three of them seems like... We're gonna keep this hand though, and I think we're gonna ship the redundant ending instead of the redundant land drop. Bloomy Marsh. Very surprised. So this is probably Yawkmoth, which is not a good matchup for us. Not a great match. Let's go for Stomping Ground and play Reclaim. Next turn, maybe we can ending something. What is this? Geist, okay. So I think I'm gonna spend this turn uh, ending the Geist. We're not gonna be able to ending the Yakmoth, so it's not a bad draw at all. I'm gonna save that for next turn, I think. So basic planes ending right there. But next turn I'm gonna be able to, you know, fetch, activate reclaimer, and we're gonna have Soul Guide. Opponent fetches in response to the attack. Whatever. We're good. Okay, so now if my opponent has a Yakmoth, it's a little bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world, because they don't really have the engine going. Gris would probably be more annoying than Yawkmoth, actually. Opponent fetches, and now what? Another Geist. And the Blood Artist. Okay. So, let's play Saga. We're gonna Soul Guide. Soul Guide Excel that, say go. So now you have a 3-4 blocker, which is pretty nice. Opponent probably has Scavenging News, though. So we don't really have a 3-4 blocker. But I think I'm probably taking that trade anyway. So let's get Flagstones. Tap. That's a Ren. Well, Ren's nice. So let's play our land. Find the basic forest. And now we can go Ren the Blood Artist. Unsurprisingly, I do have Court of Calling. So they're probably going to get Yawkmoth. But then we just soul guide and get rid of the Geist. I mean, we're gonna be forced into doing so, I think. I mean, I guess we can actually just get Bojugabog, which is, ah, getting Bojugabog is kind of interesting here. It exposes the Ren, but I think that 
the rain is going to be exposed regardless because we're not going to have good blocks with reclaimer so i think we're just going to do this right now trigger flagstones get garden then we're going to get bojugabog and this means that we actually have the soul guide lantern still in play my opponent is going to get to attack down the ren reclaimer is a 2-3 opponent is going to sack blood artist and next turn we have sudan orb huh I guess we can also crack Soul Guide and then we can call for uh, the other guy. We can call for uh, Rallier and then get back the Soul Guide, which is interesting. Like if, if that were something that we're interested in. Not clear. We could get back Renin 6 though. Exciting. So that's Giraffe Messenger. I think we're going to outrace that with Suranorb unless my opponent can kill me right now. If one of the draws was Young Wolf or... Yeah, the cord. Uh, oh, I guess I have the soul guide. Never mind. We're good. <laughs> Still good here. Still good here. I think this kills my reclaimer, however. So, yeah, I'm feeling good about uh, my sequencing because, like, by getting Bujugabog, when I had the chance, when I knew that my reclaimer wasn't gonna die, it allowed me to, like, do this now. Uh, do I wanna guide now or do I wanna wait? So this comes back. I think I just want to get rid of the Giraffe's Messenger. This is fine. Yogg is doing some work. Like, this is one of the main reasons why I have PD Needle in my sideboard, right? Yogg is pretty strong. Just like Hansel. He's so hot right now. All right. That's my, that's my Reclaimer dying. So I think my opponent is just trying to set up having two Undying Creatures. Okay, now what? So I can call... And get back reclaimer with is that better than i think so right yeah so we're gonna float a mana then we're going to get our suit and orb then plus on flagstones of trocare we have already enabled uh what's his name right so now we go call for rallier and now red, white, rally your back, Elvish Reclaimer. This puts two bodies in play. And my opponent doesn't have Blood Artist, so even the Giraffe Messenger combo doesn't kill me. Which is nice, because I have Surin Orb and I can raise it. Ugh, that's awkward. Um, do I want to draw a card, or do I want to get a land into play? I think I actually would rather get a land into play, because that's two extra life. So let's get a uh, mount. So the, the blood is being gone means that this is not this does not kill me because I'm I'm at a virtual higher life total than my opponent is. So I think they have a free attack here. I'm just gonna block with Rallier. I don't know if my opponent stole the Suran Orb actually. So I'm gonna wait for my opponent to like do a little bit of this combo thing. Again, they don't have lethal. Hmm. So they do that one more time, and then I'm going to stop the F6. But so far, we're not dead. Opponent goes for it once again. And I think they're going to go for it once again. I think I, I wait until this trigger is on the stack. And uh, we suck this. And this is the reason why I, get, I got back the flagstones with the Ren. Because it represents one extra... Uh, two extra life. Made sure I can't get raised. And now we're at a virtually higher life total, so my opponent doesn't have a lethal anymore. So that's why they're, <laughs> that's why they're re reassessing a little bit on tanking. Yeah, they, they, they were activating again, but they can't do it. Like, if they go to low, then the run just pings them. So they're just going to let this resolve. That's right, opponent. Go back to your place. Go back to your place. Who do you think you're talking to? All right, opponent pivots. Noble Hierarch. Ignoble, I guess. Endurance. Okay. So they're going to shuffle my stuff back in. Oh, they're shuffled their stuff back in. Oh, now they... If they have a cord in hand, they get to win. Okay, that was good. That was pretty good. Yeah, they have the cord. Okay, now it is actually lethal. It wasn't before, but now, yeah, kind of a beating. I guess if I if I had cracked the soul guide and I had exiled the blood artist, we would have won. Crazy. It's pretty crazy. All right. Next game. So I think we want needle. We want hers. And anything else? I don't think Endurance is very good. 
Don't think force is very good. But Jugo Ball was fine. Ending is fine. Like all of these cards are just okay. Soul Guide's cool. Rain is fantastic. Rallyer is probably good too. I think I'm just gonna cut the endurances. And uh, do you want to cut a Boseju? I don't think so. Let's cut a Grazer. Let's cut a Grazer and call it a day. Okay, game number two. This hand's pretty solid. We'll keep it. Um, one that's not Mulligan Splinter Twin. One that's not Mulligan Splinter Twin, you know? That's just not how it works. That's not how it is. I could see my opponent bringing in Magus against me. So I probably want to watch out for that. And I want to play accordingly. So pass the turn. It's also very nice how I get to activate Reclaimer for Saga straight up because I don't need the Flagstones. But I really want to, you know, I want to get Saga into play as soon as possible because of the other card. The other card. Uh, Pit Needle. I want to get Pit Needle into play. Okay, uh, that's kind of a beating actually. Uh, Liberator is kind of a beating here. Is there anything I can do about it? Not really. So we just have to hope that we find a spell that we can cast. Hold. Spell that we can cast. Ren. So this is going to flip and it's going to destroy me. Like this is going to absolutely obliterate me now. Absolutely obliterate me. Man, the natural turn to... <sighs> the natural turn to Liberator is... <laughs> Ugh. I guess I'm going to have to just have this go. I have to assume that they're gonna try to kill the Saga instead of the Suran Orb. And then I have to block and I guess make Reclaimer into a 3-4 so I can trade with this thing. And then my opponent blows up Suran Orb. Oh, come on. That's so ridiculous. Ugh. So I guess I have to get Bog here. We can get Titania. We have Titania next turn, even through my opponent blowing up my Ursa Saga. So that's not nothing. That's not nothing. Which means that my opponent is going to have to sack the Trap Breaker um, to the Sudan Orb, right? Blow up Saga. Sucks, but it is what it is. Um, play Fetch Land. Find it. Maybe I should have played the other land. And, and, and like I, I'm considering whether I should be playing around Magus. We'll see if my opponent lets this result, they do. Interesting, so I guess I'll go for fetch land. Because this is two token, this is at least a token whether the Suran Orb survives or not. And I think I'm just making four, five, threes here. Oh, just nothing, huh? Opponent's just doing nothing. I think I'm gonna upkeep fetch. Get foundry, tapped, say go. And I don't think I can get comboed from here. If my opponent attacks to blow up the orb, I get to make, what is this? Three blockers for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attackers. They have to block four of them, I think. Because I'm going all in on this Titania. Easy go all in on t They sack Liberator. Okay, to get Yogg. Okay, I don't think that does anything. All right. I mean, that threatens Titania, but I'm still swinging for lethal. And they can't stop me from sacking all my things. So they're just limiting themselves here. They're just going to be sacrificing their own blockers. Like, I'm down for this. They're literally just killing their own blockers. Okay, sack bird. Yeah, I, I'm not sure my opponent understands what's going on here. <laughs> I don't think there's anything they can draw anymore. Okay, sack that one. Sort of yield to these triggers. And sack that one. And sack that one. They play their land already, so they, they can't actually net mana in any way. So here, seven, five, threes. F6. Do your best. Do your best, do your worst. Do do whatever you want, opponent. I don't think they can have the... The, the card is like Engineer Explosives. But I can't remember the name, it's like a split card. My opponent got too tempted by the by blowing up the Ursa Saga. It was too much value. But the real prize was here all along, just sitting idly, just chilling on this side for a grand total of zero mana, Suranorb. <laughs> Doing work. 
Um, this looks fine to me, I think. Submit. Okay, this hand looks pretty interesting to me. I think I'm gonna keep it. Opponent also keeps seven. If we had been on the play, I think that we probably couldn't have lost. Uh, that's a good draw, however. Well, does that change anything? I think we go turn one stomping ground now. Stomping ground, and we're gonna play your reclaimer. And even if my opponent goes turn two Magus, we don't really care because we can play a fetch and then we fetch for our basic. It's a young wolf, another young wolf. Well, I think we're just gonna go basic forest, ren, ping, ping the noble hierarch, pass. Next turn we get to march something or not, <laughs> I guess. Um, Depends on what my opponent does over here. All right, so we got a pass. I could ping Young Wolf. I could go ping Young Wolf with Ren. Play fetch, say go. I think that's what I want to do. We have enough lands in hand already. We have a second Ren lined up. We also have a Renegade Rallier. So I think we'll just chill here. One is going to cord on my end step or just do nothing. That also is fine. Still doing nothing. Well, I can beat this. <laughs> I think these I can beat. So, sack this. I think we're just gonna go with flagstones and we're gonna chill here. We're gonna take it very slow. It's not great. So, let's play, let's fetch first. Get Sacred Foundry. Gonna ping the bird. Then, Play this, play Ren. And now the question is, do we want to ping the Young Wolf or get back in line? I think I want to I want to ping the Young Wolf. Because it's still not clear that I want to over otherworldly light anything. So I'm just going to chill here. Opponent just doesn't seem to have the cord. Now even if opponent does have the Yogg, they're not really doing anything, which is nice. So they're throwing away one of these in order to kill my Ren, which is fine. Cheer off Messenger, that's okay. But I can just rally her back the Ren anyway, so I don't really care. Uh, we are gonna get a Saga here. Temple Garden, not playing around Magus any longer, I don't think. Um, let's get Saga. Now we can... That's a terrible draw. Really, really awful draw, actually. So I think we're gonna... that makes me pivot. I'm gonna do this, and I'm just going to right now march this thing. One, two, three, four. Pass the turn. And next turn, the Saga is going to trigger and that enables my Renegade Rallyer that uh, that makes it so double force. It's not terrible for them, but do I Flagstones or do I Saga? I'm just gonna Saga. Just renew that Saga. Now I'm a little bit more interested. Oof, don't mind if I do. I'm a little bit more interested now in... Yeah, this this just ends the game, right? So let's just get this. Let's get a fetch land that can fetch basic planes. Let's bog them. And I think now we start to pivot. Now we start to attack. So if my opponent has another force, I don't really care. Like what force does is it turns into a 5-3. It turns my Marusa Saga into a 5-3, which I'm kind of okay with. We'll see what they do. Yawgmoth, that, that just doesn't do enough. Is this a human? It's an elemental suite, so no protection from that. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. Let's get Temple Garden. Untap. And now the question is, I'm definitely making it Construct because it's free, but the question is, what do I get from this Ursa Saga? And I think the answer is Speeding Needle. I could get Shadow Spear, but like the the Giraffe Messenger is gone. Yeah, so let's just get Needle named Yogmoth. Run to position. Uh, that triggers Titania. Now we're gonna go Renegade Rallyer. We're gonna get back Ren and Six. Ren and Six gets back an Ursa Saga. I get back, I, I'm just gonna get back Flagstones. This is gonna allow me to activate Reclaimer. And I guess there's no need for me to... There's no need for me to swing with Titania. We, we're gonna be in good shape next turn. 
We still have one Saga left in the deck, which is what I'm gonna fetch. So my opponent's gonna need a lot of stuff here, like unreasonable amount of stuff. Their Liberator is not gone yet, so they could Liberator plus activate. That unlocks Yawkmoth, but that doesn't kill me, so I don't think I care. Also, we have Boseiju to kill the Dried Arbor for what's worth. Not sure that does anything, but we have that. Here's my last saga. Um, could, oof. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, if this game wasn't over yet, it's so surely it's over now. So let's cycle this, because we can. And we may find a Shadow Spear. We don't. So... So my opponent in champ block mode here, I think they are. So we're going to ping there, I think. I guess I swing with everything first. Let's swing with everything, I think including Titania. So if we swing like this, what happens? Opponent blocks Yogg here, which then we ping with Ren. Then they, they so they can't even trade. Because if they attempt to trade, they can trade here, trade here, and that's lethal. Yeah, so I think that just swinging with everything is, is the right move. So they just have to basically chump everything, and they go to one. No cord or anything like that. And now I could kill the Yawkmoth, which I'm very tempted to do, by the way. Very, very tempted to kill the Yawkmoth here. But I think I'm going to go with this suboptimal play and just ping their face. <laughs> All right, see you next round. Welcome to round number three. Got a bunch of flagstones, but no reclaimer. This is so unlucky. Let's uh, let's ship this. Much better. Damn, this hands the nuts. Gonna bottom shadow spear. Can we please be be paired against Belcher? Please let's be paired against Belcher. <laughs> please let's be paired against Belcher. Can we leave the dream? Can the dream be lived? That's what we're gonna try to find out. Keep bottom shadow spear. Opponent does not reveal. There's hope. There's hope that we're getting paired against Belcher. Stomping ground. Here's my reclaimer. Go. Go reclaimer, go. Basic island. Okay. So we're planning to spell beers here, but that is the nature of the beast. If my opponent has like their one-off spell pierce or whatever, we're gonna be very sad. But I don't think we're gonna have a better window to resolve this. And here we're gonna swing face. Because even if my opponent has a, a Ryavan, I'm not blocking it. So. Oh. Oh, we're looking very good then. We're looking very, very good. Shout out to Bajugabog. Shout out to Bajugabog. Play that. Siggo. Also, we have two endurances in the main deck, plus two more in the sideboard. Which is nice. Two, only two creatures in play for opponent, but probably enough to give us a headache. So if opponent does go for it, we're going to we're gonna cave. Okay. It's very sexy. That's truly, truly sexy. Outstandingly sexy, I would even say. Violin outburst. Show me that Bujuga bog. Oh, I have it, opponent. I have it. Don't worry about it. I have it. Leaving end resolves. So now we're gonna call for endurance. That's the next step here. Cycle. I mean, we can just kill that. They're giving me back my reclaimer. Deal. <laughs> that's a, that's a deal. You've cut yourself a deal, opponent. So I think I'm just gonna let's call for endurance. And now the question is, do we want to? Do we want to play Titania here? I think we play my land. I plus on Windswept Heath and say go. Because this gets uh, this gets um, a Saga into play. <clears throat> the attack. I want to fetch for a basic forest. And then we're going to sack the Bojuga, Bojuga Pog to get a Nursa Saga. So ran down to three. That's fine. We can still hard cast endurance here. Another Titania. Okay. Get bog. And I think I'm just gonna play the bog to make sure that we get rid of two living names. And we are I think we're discarding the Titania here. So now if my opponent has a living name, they give me back Titania. 
Opponent can kill the Ren. I don't care. I could also just march this thing. I'm going face. Ooh, okay. Pivot. We got a change of strategy on my opponent's side. That is certainly a change of strategy. So let's sacrifice Bojuga Ball once again. I think we want to get another Saga here. Now the question is, do we want to kill this thing, which is going to be three mana, I guess, because now we can pitch the ending, which is fine because the ending does literally nothing. So I don't mind pitching it here. So one, two, make a construct. One, two, suck this Saga, I think. Um, I think if we make a construct, then we equip, this becomes a three, three. So I think I'd rather just float the mana and I'd rather just play this Titania and just get Surinorv here. Yeah, let's just get Surinorv. Find Surinorv. One, two, three, four, five. The opponent has seen enough. All right, leave it in. Leave it in. Endurance, don't mind if I do. Uh, Harris, yes, please. Chalice, also. Please and thank you. Okay, so those are the cards that I'm interested in. What do I not care for? Proclaimer is the nuts. Uh, Prismatic Ending is a blank. I guess so is March, so let's get rid of all of these. Clean sideboarding. Mwah. Masterful sideboarding. Masterful deck building. Easy game. If you ever wonder why we're playing 29 lands, this is why, right? <laughs> we're playing uh, we're playing a bunch of colorless sources in a deck that has some pretty steep mana requirements. So we're going to ship this hand. This one is very good. So let's keep this one. I think we're going to bottom the Saga. Having access to the main deck Soul Guide is pretty nice. Too bad we don't get to make the sweet play of Missalandrop land drop to discard Titania to hand size. Not that I would ever do that, though. <laughs> it's probably not a great play. Um, that's interesting. So I guess it does it doesn't matter though, so we're just gonna do this. Because I wanna be able to hard cast this endurance. And if I draw a Ren, I wanna play it on two. So even though I'm gonna have to exile my own Iron Mesa, I think we're still fetching instead of playing the basic planes. So obviously that's a little bit of a numbo with it in, in the deck that wants to be uh to be discarding its own lands, right? But it is what it is. So I I assume my opponent has some form of interaction here. Uh, because they didn't cycle anything on Endstep. Did they keep a no cycler's hand? Oof. I mean, they're throwing some stuff into the Soul Guide Lantern, so they're really. Like, they were missing land drops over there for a second. We do have the Endurance, too, which is very nice. Uh, let's play that and see. Go. I'm probably going to get the Jet Mirror's Jet Garden. I don't think Living in Place Force anymore. So we at least got that going for us. And usually this is the sweet spot, right? Like you want to be playing your Saga when it's going to pop and get you your um, your Sudan Orb. And then with the floating man, you're going to get to hard cast your Titania to set up the k -k -k combo. So you you very rarely want to play a Saga on turn two. It just basically never happens. Forcing. Uh, let's cycle here. Eh, actually, yeah, no, actually, let's cycle, yeah. I'm very surprised by this. They have like 12 green cards or something. They don't have that many. I'm surprised that they can even afford to play that. Oh, so here's my Surin Orb. Here's my Flaxstones. And here's my Passing of the Turn. Waker of Waves. So Subtlety. Ooh, they bane this Subtlety? That's good for us. Boom. Do, do you have another Subtlety opponent? I mean, that would suck for me, but there's not too much that I can do about that, so... Please don't have another subtlety. Pretty please. They do have another one, huh? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Um, all right, so I'm dead. Is there anything I can do to not lose here? They even get like an extra flea, flea three, three. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna concede here. I don't think we can pop. Well, I can't believe they have force, honestly. It's kind of mind blowing that they they don't really have that many green cards, so I'm very surprised that they have access to Force of Vigor. Okay, number three, here we go. Uh, I keep this. So I think I want to play around. I think I want to play around Grief because I saw my opponent exiling Architects of Will, so we're gonna start right here, and now we can go Gracer, play Stomping Ground, say go. Next turn we can play Map, and we can crack it if we want to. These are not some 
These are not good draws. <laughs> These are not the draws we're looking for. <laughs> These are not the draws we're looking for. I mean, Chalice does a little bit of pestering my opponent, but it doesn't really do anything because my opponent just doesn't need to do anything to like put enough pressure on them. So that sucks. I was really hoping we could find something good. So I think we're getting Saga here because I don't think that we can really play around Force kind of all in at this point. If my opponent does have the Force plus green card, we're... Ooh, okay. I'm still gonna play this. Now, all of a sudden, I would love to get griefed. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, grief would not be all too bad. Maybe I should have gotten Bojuga Bog, honestly. Maybe I should have gotten Bojuga Bog. Foundation Breaker. Well, that's... That's a beating, actually. Because that blows up the Chalice here, and then next turn, it comes back and it blows up the Saga. So that's a huge beating there. And I drew another blank. Yeah, the we're, we're gonna lose now. Man, I really wish I had found like Endurance or I don't know, like Soul Guide Lantern, Bojuka Bog. And we did have even something like I guess Ring of Rattler didn't do anything there, but um yeah. And we we just drew a bunch of blanks and we just died, obviously. Like that's just how it happens with leaving in, right? That's just it's just how their deck goes. Jesus. Well, we were we were not getting there. We were not getting there, all right? I mean, we have so much hate. <laughs> we had so much hate. We just ran out of it. Anyway, see you next round. Okay, round number four. This hand looks not bad. Let's keep it. So we can go turn one, Foundry, Soul Guide. Turn two, Fetch, Ren. Turn three, we got choices. Opponent doesn't reveal a companion. But this hand looks solid to me. Seems robust enough. Sacred Foundry, and this is obviously so I don't have to exile my own because the this trigger is not a main. Okay, interesting. Basic Forest plus last turn. What are you playing? Court, the folk. We're playing against the folk. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. All right, Temple Garden plus. Maybe that was like a little bit too telegraphy heat there. Just jamming. It was a pretty obvious endurance. They have the counter spell or something? Subtlety. Well, I'm all about this. If there's subtlety in my irrelevant endurance, I think I'm actually topping this. Like if they just two for one themselves to get rid of it. it kind of sucks a tiny bit, but not like super, super too much. Hmm. Do I want to loss? I think I just want to play a Saga. And we're just going to plus the Renin 6. Um, and I'm just going to probably cycle this whole guide. The plan is to next turn play a fetch land. We definitely want to dodge another Tide Shaper. Both of them going at Ren. Going to cast this. And again, if they subtle to this, I'm kind of okay with that because that means that Titania is going to resolve. Oh, there goes that. Let's draw a card first to see what's the top of the deck. And we're actually gonna bottom this time around. Random six down. Boohoo. Expedition map's not a great draw. Let's see if my opponent has subtlety number three. I think I'm fetching a basic basic mountain here. So Titania is gonna effectively mean two two five threes, which is not gonna be easy for my opponent to attack through. Well, I guess that it's the only choice, that's funny. <laughs> Do we have another subtlety? No second subtle. No third subtlety, I guess. Fetch, and I guess I can't really play this expedition map here because I would have to shock. So let's just get Jet Me Jet Me yeah Jet Mir's Garden. There we go. It's two five threes. What do you got, opponent? Some blockable dudes and some lethal damage. All right, that's me being dead. <sighs> folk, the folk. So we want engine of explosives. We don't want Soul Guide Lantern. Don't want Bujuka Bog. Mm, I think Endurance is probably not going to be great. Let's bring in another Boseju. Maybe I should have just played the Endurance main phase. And I, I, I was just playing an instant speed for no reason at all. Maybe it would have just been better for me to just play the... I think I'd rather just have 30th land. First, a Vigor could be interesting. I think I'd rather have the... Kind of interesting how many resources and uh, how many time my opponent spent on trying to kill the Ren when it wasn't really doing 
So that part's a little bit surprising about how they apply my keep in this hand. I have a bunch of removal. I guess I am. Just already hit the button. So let's go. Basic forest, expedition map, say go. Aether vial. Well, sacred fountain. Blow that up. That's gone. Next turn, we get to Rallier, which is kind of nice. Four basic planes. Negate Rallier. There you go. Like, I think I'd rather save this for actually matters. If my opponent offers a trade here, I'll happily take it. They don't. Huh. Three mana. I kind of want to just jam this Titania. Something tells me that I shouldn't, but like, they could have Counterspell, I guess? That's the only card that that gets me here, so... I think I'm supposed to slam it. Yep. Alright, awesome. Funny how we can actually Bossage right now. Swing. Yeah, we have a removal spell in hand. Next turn we're gonna be f uh, cracking this map for... I don't know what for. Until end of turn. I'm just gonna fetch here. Like, you know, my opponent taps, or like they dismember my Titania now and I get blown out. There's just no reason for me to to take any risks, I'll just get my 5-3 and move on. The opponent packs it. Reclaimer seems like the nuts against this version of Mer- Force, Endurance... I think I'm kind of okay with what we have going on here. I think this is the setup that we want. It's not the best setup, but it's okay. Yep, keep this hand. Blow that up on turn- oof. Now that's a decision. I still think we just ending. I don't think we want to be messing around with that. So, fetch for... I think we just want to get a basic mountain. Going to run plus. With the Windsweep Heath. Next turn we get to E for one if we want to, which is nice. Hopefully my opponent plays like one of those silly one-drop dudes. Well, that's a lot scarier. It's a lot scarier than a silly one-drop dude. <laughs> that's, uh, that's an answer to that card, I guess. Um... I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it here. Off the basic forest. Let's EE for one. E plus on a land or whatever. Pass the turn. That's Vialun is very scary, however. That's Vialun is very... So this kills the Ren, but I do get rid of this thing. It's not mana efficient, but it'll do. Maybe they have force, I don't know. But they missed the land drop last turn, so I definitely don't want my opponent drawing cards. Silver gear, add it. Showing Master of the Pearl. That's very scary. So here's a Reclaimer. Here's a land and here's... Sword. So I can blow up Mutavolt if I want to, which is nice. Opponent doesn't have attacks. Blue. What is this? Is member? Ugh. Well, that sucks. Yeah, that's kind of brutal, actually. That dismember is pretty devastating. That's a pretty brutal dismember. So now we are back to trying to find anything. One is holding up. Holding up, what's his name? I think I'm gonna Bossage right here. Just to use my mana efficiently. But my opponent is holding up subtlety over there. So we'll love to find... That doesn't do it. Subtlety is such a beating here. I can enable this rallyer in a couple of different ways. I can find a land from the flagstones or I can fetch. Like I just I have to play into the subtlety though. Can I afford to just pass the turn? I guess I'll have to. The problem is if they have the the two drop guy. No, they can't have the two drop guy because they, they showed me Master of the Pearl Trident. So they, they have a subtlety over there. I guess they have both. Never mind. Jesus. Well, I got super owned. I get super owned. Okay, so now we have to draw engineer explosives. We're not dead just yet. <laughs> um, so I guess we're gonna go fetch for a planes. This is gonna bait out this subtlety. Hmm, that just resolves, huh? Well, uh, let's get back Reclaimer. Here's a Boseju. And here's an Explosives for two. So they're just bluffing. I mean, I don't even have to crack these explosives because my opponent can't do anything. They just don't have attacks anymore. And they have to respect this Reclaimer because otherwise they lose to it. Tide Shaper. You got me. Uh-huh. That's an island now. Surprise to say the least. But I guess I'll take it. Um, yeah, let's pass the turn here. 
I mean, we're not even close to being dead, so this Reclaimer is just going to win. Reclaimer is just going to win. Doesn't even need any help. Sack that one. Uh, get this land over here. Here, Sanursa Saga. Untap. Trigger Saga. Play Flagstone. Say go. Surinorv showing off. <laughs> Surinorv just completely showing off. Yep. Just one drop too strong. Let's see you for the last round. All right. So, sounds pretty interesting, actually. I think I'm going to go. I'm going to keep this. And we can go turn one Gracer into play Saga, which is a very interesting pattern. I think I still want to turn one the Reclaimer. Maybe wrong about this, but I think I do want to turn one the Reclaimer anyways. It's close. It's definitely a matchup dependent kind of. Sea Chrome Coast. Okay, so play this. We're just going to get another forest right here, I think. I'm assuming that we're playing against uh, Affinity of some sort. Could be Hammer, I guess. No, it's Affinity. Actually, could still be Hammer, technically. Oh, dude, it's now a 3-4. Let's get Flagstones. I probably want to save this ending after we know what my opponent's up to over there. Let's play Saga. And let's play this Gracer with this Temple Guard I need to play. And pass the turn back. Unclear what we're going to be doing with this Reclaimer just yet. We have many options, like we can start to set up a Blast Zone, for example. We can try to... Um, only thought. Like, this could still very much be Hammer so far, for what we've seen. When the Saga pops off, that's probably going to be the main indicator of what my opponent's up to. We'd love to see a Boseju. Like, I have to assume that this matchup is just amazing for us post-board. Maybe we're like a little bit behind in game one and then game two we were just very heavy favorites no Renin six kind of sucks i'm considering playing out this gracer just as a charm blocker because i don't think that we're really gonna get any value from it but i think it's it's probably it's possible that i may get up i may have to get blast zone and if that's the case then i don't want to you know put something into play that's gonna get blown up by the blast zone anyway so it's ridiculous. At this point, just I assume my opponent's on hand. I think it's the only thing that makes sense now. They just have like a very awkward draw. Because if they were an affinity, they, they're they probably main in blue. Double Saga is pretty good. No equip Shadow Spear. Interesting. I'll take my Chomp while we can. So here we're gonna make a Construct. And I think I'm just getting Blast Zone. So fetch for Sacred Foundry. Let's get Blast Zone. If we had a Renan 6 in play, I would get Boseju, but we don't, so that sucks. Um, one, what am I doing with this Saga? Probably getting Surinorv. We're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So, with eight mana, oh, I can go get Expedition Map, then Expedition Map finds Boseju, Boseju blow up there. That's probably better. Um, the thing is, do I want to construct or not? So one, two, three, four. This cracks the blast zone. Two to activate reclaimer right now, so I can cash in this saga. I think I can't make it construct. Uh, actually, one, two, three. Construct. One, two. Activate. One, two. Boseju. Yeah, I can. The thing is, I'm, I'm at a very healthy life total, though. Yeah. So I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna take the risk here. But I think I need to progress my my board state here. Oh, I forgot to activate. Whoops. Oh, that sucks. Um, expedition map. Play this out. Crack map. Boseju. Forest. Oh, no, we don't have big... That's scary. Blacksmith skill. Okay, now that is hammer. <laughs> we figure that part out. Um, that's kind of beating. So now what? We have to use our constructs to chomp. We're gonna be chomping only one, I guess, so this is... Oh, man. It's kind of a beating. Like, we need the Titania, we need the Ren. That's the kind of stuff we need right now. Yeah, I've, I've actually been very impressed with Black Myth skill out of the, the Hammer decks. The amount of times that I've been losing to, to that card is kind of unreal. So we'll just block there. Um, do I fetch? 
I think it's better if I find Titania to not fetch there. Sadness. Okay, so. One, two, three, crack. One, two, to activate. So I can pay for us per Sentinel. So I have to kill this thing. So that's one of them down. One, two, three, four. And I think I'm going to have to get value from this Reclaimer because I, I need to get another Saga. So we're just going to basically chump block and then crack Blast Zone. I th think that's the line. Opponent makes a Saga construct on end step. They're going to make another one of their turn constructs. At least they're going to become, I guess, not significantly small. It's still going to be four fours. So we're going to be taking a significant, some big boys, some big, big boys. No attacks. Well, that helps me. That's a little bit of a little bit of a whoopsie from my opponent right there. I think I have to. Let's make it. Let's make a saga here. Now the question is, do we crack now? I think we still don't. Oh you know, come on, man! <laughs> Ish. This is getting rough. Make a construct. Use that. Pay for tax. Please don't have another skill. Please, pretty please. Okay. So we're still chum blocking though. It's not great. Reality cheap on end step. Well, that's a beating. That's a beating for sure. That is indeed a beating. After I used my my both removal spells, yeah, it's not looking good for the good guys. Not looking good for the good guys. For an equipped shadow spear, serves. Last fetchable. <laughs> Just drew them all. Uh. One, two, three, four. This is not looking good, folks. This is not looking good. Uh, let's find another saga. Uh, we're gonna crack this blast zone now, which is. But we are very much in desperation mode. <laughs> we're very much in desperation mode here. Second aid, brutal. Titania. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So we get to make one construct, so it doesn't we make it. Okay. Finally had a good draw. Four, five, Titania. I think we're getting back Blast Zone. So we basically guarantee that we can't die out of nowhere. Second Cigar the Sade. It's a land. Yeah, it's fairly straightforward. As you can see, it only it only took <laughs> it only took one good draw and, and then we stabilized uh, that board state. So kinda finally got there. It took long enough, but once we did get there, it was good enough. Okay, so I don't think Chalice is particularly good in this matchup, which, you know, you'd think that'd be the case, but my experience is that usually the fact that you have no control over when it comes down, like, it's great if you play it on turn two, but if you play it on turn three, it's more often than not a bit too slow. You just die. Um, so because of that, I don't like Chalice. I do like Blast Zone. I do like all the Boseijus. This could be a matchup where we shave on Reclaimers and Flagstones because our other cards are just so much better. We could also shave on Rallier, but Rallier getting back Blast Zone, getting back, you know, that Shadow Spear Orb or whatever seems pretty strong. Also, Ren and Six is a pretty good matchup as well. <laughs> as tempted as I am to keep to keep a one lander with our Singleton Basic Mountain, we're probably gonna have to ship it. This is much better though. This is much much better. I think I'm gonna keep and I'm gonna send the Ladambri skull because we're gonna we're gonna have our mouth our hands full. Our mouth's full as well. Uh, we're gonna be using our mana a lot. Turn one S percent. We're gonna get stomping ground with this fetch land. Reclaimer, so you go. One two is indeed bigger than a one one. Opponent starting hot with the with the saga. Opponent reveals Kaldra, which we can just ending. Not that big of a deal. So let's fetch for a basic forest and pass the turn here. And I think we're gonna go for flagstones. I think we have we're gonna have time. This is gonna be interesting though. Is my opponent going to go for Kaldra? They are. Okay. Very interesting. And they holding up I guess they're holding up white or blue. So they could have skill. Or just neither. It's also fine. Okay, so. Activate, get flagstones, and tap. That's me being very sad. So yeah, we're definitely gonna have to ending the Kaldra. Uh, we're not gonna be able to pay, which is obviously really bad. But I'm trying to set up Reclaimer getting Blast Zone this turn. So if we don't die here, 
which seems unlikely because I think my opponent is going to get Beating Needle with this, which means that I'm not going to be able to crack a Blast Zone, so at that point I will need to top deck exactly, um, exactly Engineered Explosives, or maybe they just named Reclaimer, which is also a Beating. So regardless, we're not in great shape. And I, I have to Chomp Lock, because they could also just get... Oh, that's bad. So that's, that means that they have Land Hammer, in which case I am just... Am I dead? We take 12 minus 4. So I guess I'm technically not. There's the hammer. But I am dead to the construct next turn. So I, I am dead. <laughs> it may look like I'm not dead, but I actually am dead. My opponent knows about the blast zone, so there's no harm in doing this here. And I may find exactly Force of Vigor. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and keep playing even though I go to 1. I go to 2, sorry. Hey, okay. I'm gonna play this tapped. I mean, I'm gonna do this on upkeep, which kind of sucks a little bit, but I'd rather my opponent not be able to use the mana for the make construct with the saga. Whoops, uh, no, yeah, this is fine. So we're gonna crack Blast Zone here, so we kill the Esper Sentinel, otherwise my opponent's gonna get to draw a card off the force. And now we force killing both of these. So this is what we got. We lose to a variety of things. But as is, we're not dead on board. We would go to one. <laughs> Saga number three in the top 16 card. Yikes. That's going to be hard to beat. That's going to be hard to beat. Okay, Eledambri's call is not terrible. I am at one, however. So I probably will have to go get... I have to get Surnor, which is going to make casting this call very, very hard. But hey... It's a plan. It's gonna have to suck like a bunch of, like sinking a bunch of resources. The thing is that my opponent, the threat of activation means that my opponent can't really do anything. Like they can't attack yet. Just because of the threat of activation. Well, that sucks for me. <laughs> now the Caldra uh, kills me, so. All right, we tried. <laughs> we tried. Uh, game number three, changes. Not really. Maybe Peeding Needle over a Reclaimer. So the thing, the reason why I don't like Reclaimer so much is that you know, we're always going to be blowing up Blast Zone on one. And the same is true for the two copies of Engineered Explosives. So because of that, I don't think Reclaimer is particularly great in the matchup. It may be better than Gracer, however. On so maybe, maybe that's enough of a reason to like change the split a little bit. On the draw, I, it, I think I like Gracer better. Okay. Let's keep this hand. Certainly an interesting one. Um, but, you know, uh, Ren plus Vaseju is really, really hard to pass up. So we're not going to. <laughs> we're just, we're not going to pass it. Opponent moves to five. And I have a Ren plus Vaseju. I like where this is going. Okay. There's a fetch land. Let's find our basic forest. We don't really need too harsh on our life total just yet. Plus over there. Let's see what my opponent does here. Well, we can blow that up. Peeding Needle. Sure. I assume my opponent's gonna name Ren. They should still attack the Ren, however. For smacking is very nice. Yeah, so ending that. Uh, actually, let's play my land first. So ending that. Fetch, we get Temple Garden. Sage you. And plus Ren and six. We do lose if my opponent's remaining cards are land into land into cigar vasades into um, hammer hammer. If those are my, my opponent's remaining cards, we are gonna lose. Very interesting. Let's plus here, stomping ground one e back to land and pass the turn. And we don't really have to use both sages. We can just use the threat of activation because I, I'm not super excited about fetching and shocking. But if we have to use Bosage, which is nice. Opponent is pretty far away from, uh, what's his name? So that's good. Metalcraft. Kaldra complete. I think I'm gonna call for Reclaimer. So I can find Saga and then Saga can find, uh, actually. No, let's get Jetmir's. Jetmir's garden. That's very nice. Very, very nice. I guess we're gonna make one five three. Hmm. So I guess I have to kill this thing, huh? I have to kill the giver. Which means my opponent is going to get to put Kaldra into play. 
So I can't Titania this turn. I can't Titania. Hmm. This this is tricky. So I think I have to I have to kill the giver. I don't think there's any other options there. So I'm gonna cast. Uh, I mean I could pitch with the call, so it costs one less, but I don't think I want to be doing that. Okay. We don't have force or anything like that. I can call and play a reclaimer, but then I'm not holding up Boseju. I don't think I can afford to not. So I only have one fetchable left. We managed to find to naturally draw all of our fetchables, which is a little bit awkward. But at least this pressures my opponent into um, into getting into attacking the Ren, because otherwise we're just going to have infinite marches. Second Paladin, Jesus. So now they're going to draw two, which is a beating. They kind of do have to to attack the Ren though, which gives gives me a little bit of breathing room. So that goes after Ren, still chilling at 11. Let's call, who are we gonna call? I guess Reclaimer. Let's fetch for our last fetchable land. Truly a beating. <laughs> oh my. Um, all right, sometimes you do the thing, sometimes the thing does you, I guess. Uh, that's so brutal, man. <laughs> that is so brutal. Oh, that's such a beating. Um, even a second rain would have been fine. <laughs> even a second rain would have been fine because I could like double ping something. But oh my god, this is devastating. I can't even do anything. So I guess if I attack now, that sort of forces a block next turn. Assuming my opponent draws nothing. Which seems unlikely when they're drawing two extra cards every turn. Well, I can't believe how I just drew nothing so many turns in a, in a row. That's so many turns. <laughs> That's so many turns of drawing nothing. <clears throat> I'm gonna let my opponent activate here. We do have access to the Poseidon. Um So we lose if my opponent has a hammer, but I don't think... I win if I let my opponent do this. And oh, I forgot that this only costs one. I could have, I could have deployed the reclaimer. That could be game losing, actually. That could be game losing. That I forgot that I could do. Like that's a pretty significant mistake. So if they have hammer, I just lose now. Now, that is the most frustrating game I've played in a really long time. <laughs> uh, that's the most frustrating game I played in a really long time. Like we have red and six plus Boseju going. And my opponent moved to five, but I just drew nothing for ever. <laughs> I just drew blank after blank after blank for six turns. I guess sell la vie sometimes. The fact that I found all of my fetchables too made my made my place so awkward. Uh, but yeah, my opponent just right click attacks all here, and even even if I block like this, like I just don't have enough. I just didn't have anything. Man, that's that's so devastating. Anyway, all right, we're back for a little wrap up here. Um, the return of Nia Lance was pretty good, pretty good overall. Um, yeah, we got paired against uh, the losses were against Living and, and Hammer. Um, I don't think there was too much I could have done against Hammer. They could have actually. I should have just drawn better. Like I, I there's only so many cyber cards that I can play, right? Like, but Hammer was historically a good matchup. I. I mean, I just got very unlucky. I just got hit by variants, I think. Um, every time I played this deck, I was actively excited to face Hammer. I think it's it's a pretty good matchup. Uh, particularly games two and three, we have so many backbreaking cyber cards, and we have so many angles of attack between Reclaimer, Finding, Blast Zone, uh, Boseju, plus Ren and Six. Like, we have a lot of angles of attack that we can take advantage of. Um, we also got pretty against Living End, where kind of the same thing happened. Like, we had... Uh, we had a significant amount of cyborg cards, right? Like we we had four endurances, two chalices, uh, and then like two unlicensed hearths, and we just found none of them. So it's just it's just this thing that could happen. Like I'm not too scared or like too worried about it. Um, the thing is that you know a deck like this is really really hard to. What I'm trying to say here, like. It has certain weaknesses that are really, really hard to fix. And you are kind of threading the needle 
where you can be a little bit slow and clunky if you don't have cards like a Rogue Racer, but at the same time, if you find your cards in the wrong order, then you may find yourself in a situation. It's basically like the, the, the John problem. Obviously, we are not as bad as John, really. Like, John, the problem with John is like the John cards are not just, they're not good anymore, pound for pound. While, as we saw it through, during the league, it only takes like one Titania and then all of a sudden you are ahead. Like, you, you are super, super far behind and then you just draw the single ton Titania. And like all of a sudden you are just super far ahead and or, or you just win straight up like like we saw against Yakmoth, like we saw against Hammer in game one. So um like obviously the, the cars are pound for pound better. Um the same is true for like Renan Six, the same is true for you know like Ursa Saga, like all of these cars are just so objectively powerful, but if you see like in, in that last game, for example, we saw Bosse Juren, which is a very powerful combination, but then we just drew, and the worst part is like we drew all of our fetchables, and you can only play so many fetchables and so many fetchables, and you need to be playing uh, so many fetch fetchables and so many fetchlands because that's sort of what makes your engine tick. So you are, it has the the non brainstorm deck problem, or like the non the non DRC problem, uh, the non DRC deck problem. It, it, it's the the modern form of that issue where you are just a victim of you are uh, your your game depends on the what the top of, the, of your deck has for you. Like if, if in that last game we had four, we have drawn like a single force of vigor. If we had drawn like a single engineered explosives. If we had drawn one more prismatic ending, I think we would have been able to to take over the game. Like if we had found like a Nusa Saga, you know, if we had found any, if we had drawn any of those cards at any point, I think we would have been in, in really really good shape. But we have no control over that. So. You are playing a deck that has that uh, weakness or like uh, that that um, characteristic, I guess is is the way to say it. But we did play some some interesting matches. We had some some very cool interactions happening. We saw like the power of Elder's Reclaimer throughout that league, where multiple games it was just Reclaimer came down, it went unanswered, it just won the game by itself. Like didn't really need much help of any, or anything like that. So. It has some some interesting play patterns. It has some very cool uh, options. And I still think that this shell is pretty solid. I'm I'm liking the Rallyer aspect of things. We did see that uh, happen today as well, where Rallyer got me back like a Reclaimer. I, I use, also used Rallyer to get back Renan 6, used Rallyer to get back lands in, in this very league. So you did see the power uh, uh, that, that this card has in the deck. Um, besides that, I don't think there's too much else to think about or like to tinker with like the marches were exactly what I expected they were just like a very what's the word I'm looking for inefficient they were just a very inefficient removal spell because you don't have enough white cards to make sure that you are playing them for cheap and even if you did like it wouldn't be that good so this is definitely like the flex slot in a way it's possible that these are just better off as uh, just lightning bolts because what I wanted to have access to is like Waste Once or DRC or stuff like that. But I was erring towards March because March kills uh, the, the card that everybody loves now, the, the Bird Lawyer, while uh, Lightning Bolt does not. So because of that, I, I was uh, considering playing March instead. It also kills stuff like Dead Shadow, Grixis Shadow is making a little bit of a comeback. So um, it's interesting. It's interesting. I don't think there are too many too many cards that you can really tinker with while still keeping the the original intention of the deck. Like, I feel like all of these cards are a must. You can tinker with the mana base, but I don't really think that you want to go below 28 lands. And if you if you do go below 28 lands, at that point, you're cutting either Flagstones or Bojuka Bog or Boseju. And like, do you really want to cut those cards? Maybe the basic mountain could go, and that could be either another fetch land or another fetchable, um, like another shock land or whatever. So that is the kind of tinkering that I, that I'm gonna be trying to to continue thinking about for this deck. But overall, I think the deck is is reasonable. It's reasonable. I'm not gonna go ahead and say that this is a tier one deck in its current iteration. I don't think it's even tier two, uh, but I do think that you can five over a league. I do think that if you get the, the correct pairings, and because there, there are certain pairs that are just really bad, right? Like the, the four color decks are extremely, extremely hard to beat, almost unbeatable. 
in my experience because they just do exactly what we are doing but they're so much better at doing it so they're, they're kind of a beating so um, I don't know how many more options or how many more cards we can tinker with but uh, the deck's fun I love it I think it's a it's a very cool brew and hopefully you enjoyed it as well and if you did make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video folks take care bye bye